It was here at Jerusalem, in the aftermath of the First Crusade, that a new knighthood was born. The poor, fellow soldiers of Christ and the Temple of Solomon, popularly known as the Knights Templar, was the most famous and infamous of the crusading military orders. Formed between 1118 and 1120 AD, the Templars had the mandate of protecting the many Christian pilgrims who ventured to the Holy Land to see the sites sacred to their faith. The Templars were an unusual order in that they lived both an active and contemplative life, making them effectively the first warrior monks in the Western world. As such, the Templars quickly expanded beyond their role as protectors of pilgrims and played a vital role in many battles of the Crusades. Although they suffered more defeats than they celebrated victories, the Templars are nonetheless remembered as Christendom's most fearless military force. There have been many books written about the Templars in recent years. Unfortunately, the vast majority of them have perpetuated myths about the Templars that were created almost the second the Order ceased to exist. If there was some hidden treasure, sacred relic, or secret knowledge, the Templars found it buried beneath the Temple Mount, and the discovery made them rich and powerful, or so the speculative authors would have us believe. However, the true story of the Templars and their rise to wealth and power is every bit as fascinating as the speculative stories, because it shows us that for all their piety and dedication to their faith, the Templars were every bit as prone to human greed as their secular counterparts. This rise in power and prosperity continued until the Templars ran foul of King Philip IV of France, who arrested the Templars on Friday, October 13, 1307, on a variety of heretical charges. Philip had the Templars tortured in order to extract confessions of guilt, and many of their number were ultimately burned at the stake. In Nobly Born, I present this fascinating story about the Templars in both pictures and prose, as we examine not only the history of the Knights Templar, but the history of the complex world in which they operated. It was a world where political and personal interests often overshadowed the greater mission of the Crusades, a world in which yesterday's enemy could become today's ally, and one in which patron could become persecutor just as quickly. As East and West once again wrestle with each other in a battle of ideologies, Nobly Born is not so much a book about history as it is a mirror through which to examine today's world.